Okay, so this video is just to show you my network setup. Now, I've only just moved into this flat, so it is still not 100%, but this, the placement of it is pretty much where it's going to stay. The only difference is this router will probably be here, up here, because I'm getting a new TV stand from Ikea, which basically is not the Kallax unit, but basically up a little bit higher, but not too far from where it is. So this is the router itself. Now, TalkTalk routers come in two flavours. Uh, there's a standard broadband one, or there's their fibre one. This is the fibre one. Uh, it's quite distinguishable because it's got the orange background. It is actually a really good router. Now, I'm very honest with my reviews. And uh, for people who've watched my videos before will know, I don't normally use an ISP router. Um, I have a ubiquity access point, which I would normally turn off the Wi-Fi capabilities of this and have that hooked in. But because it's so good, I don't need to. And now that I'm paying my own electricity and et cetera, et cetera, if I don't need it, there's no point in paying for it because obviously they do use electric and I just don't need it. The, the performance of this is spectacular. For, for the size flat I've got and the coverage I need, performs really well. So I'm really pleased and, you know, I'm doing this review as well because talk to get a lot of slack and I have not personally experienced it, but I've, I've been in with other people who have experienced not very good service. And as much as it hasn't been 100% smooth sailing, which I'm, you know, I am going to go through because I, I know it's not all some, you know, praise. But so far, so good. It's been really good. Now, the reason why I went for Talk Talk is a price point. Um, for me, broadband's broadband. It runs through. Having worked for BT, I know it all runs through the same technology. It all runs through the same copper wire. The only difference is when it gets to the exchange, it kind of goes through different people's servers and mainframes. But for the most part, they're all going to be very similar. Now, I've always been with Sky. Um, I haven't this time. I've, I haven't got Sky TV um, until later in the month, uh, next month, or their broadband. I decided to give Talk Talk a go because there was a lot price difference compared to Sky. Um, and yeah, and like so far, so good. Now I pay for the eighty twenty service, so eighty megabits download, twenty megabits upload. That's the fastest you can get at the moment on fibre to the cabinet or FTTC. And the technology involved in that is fiber optic cable up until the green cabinet closest to your house and then it's copper the rest of the way uh, that's pretty much the standard here in the uk uh, fttp which is fiber to the premises which is a direct fiber to your house uh, is expanding but for me here on the coast it's going to be a long time and to be honest for what i need it's perfect i don't need 300 megabits download and upload and cost of the earth so this is my setup now this is obviously the router here. Now, to get to there, all I've had to do is basically down here is my telephone line. Now, excuse all the wires, it's still not 100%. Um, as I said, I've only just really moved in, but I thought I'd show you. Now, this is a, a socket that I fit myself. Um, and yeah, it's um, Master Socket 5C. It's basically got a built-in filter, no need for those little bits of plastic. And as you can see, I haven't got a landline, so I don't need the other one. I just have the... Uh, obviously access for the router. Now that line obviously goes outside and then goes across the street to the nearest pole, uh, which is just up the road. Luckily, a green cabinet is literally outside my building, so I am as close to a cabinet as you can probably get. And then that cable then runs up my bookshelf to this drawer. Now, I'm gonna give you a good look around the route in, uh, in a minute, but you can just see I've only got three wires. Uh, power to the left, one ethernet cable, gigabit obviously, and then obviously the telephone line in, um, and that's it. And then that will go down, just literally down the next shelf to my Netgear router. Now, uh, sorry, switch. Now the reason why I use these is I like it because it's good to quickly monitor your network. So if something is flashing like the clappers, you know something is using a lot of data or bandwidth, and it's great because you get to see what's happening on your own network. Now, the router itself has got four gigabit ports, um, but for me, I always use more, and I just prefer to go through a switch, personally. Um, so obviously, this is the main backbone cable that goes to the router, that provides internet to this switch. And then I've got various things on here. So one of them is, this one here is for the CCTV system, which is just down there. Uh, that gives me access to that, so I can remotely watch it. Uh, that is to the Apple TV because it's only 10 at uh, 100 megabits per second. So the lights basically mean 
One is link, so it acknowledges there's a link at the other end and it's talking to it, there's power to it. And the next one means it's 100, uh, it's gigabit speed. So gigabit's the router. Not everything um, has a gigabit ethernet port on it though. And then one of them is to the PS4. So this one's to the PlayStation 4, which is just next to it. But obviously, because it's not on, there is no power going to it. And then another one will be for, so you've got Apple TV, you've got the CCTV, you've got the PS4, and I'm sure there's other things as well, but I can't. Oh, one of them goes to a power line kit just down there, which then goes to the bedroom. So when I'm in my office, if I want to hardwire or upload to YouTube, I can just hardwire it instead. Power line isn't, 100% you know as good as direct access wire but it's, it's pretty much better now obviously I've got another one here which has got a uh, this plugs into my Mac in the living room if I'm doing something quite large on the internet gives me direct access so that's my little setup here so it's not 100% but this is pretty much how it's going to stay infrastructure wise um, it's going to get moved around soon and I can do another update video if need be. But the router itself, we're going to have a look now. So obviously, this is the router itself. Now, I won't lie to you, the stand on it is useless. Now, you can see the stand here. It comes out all the time. Now, it's been like that since I had it. Um, it doesn't seem to clip in. Um, you can see if I just moved it a little bit, it will just pop back out. It's very, very cheaply made, unfortunately. It's... Um, but I have been given the option to get it swapped over, um, but the catch is I would basically have to um, send this one back first before they would initiate a return, so I would be without a router, which just seems bizarre. How they can't do it the other way is beyond me, but there we go. Looking then round, you can obviously see you've got various details. I'm just going to spin it now, as you can see, as soon as I move it, the actual stand flies off so that is the only downfall this rear is that is crap but there we go now you can see here there's various bits there's my ssid and password so if you're in sydney feel free to jump on even though that is wrong because i've changed it changed it manually but there we go so here goes a little card um, and this will have your default details on there and obviously what's very nice touch underneath if you do change your details you obviously write the new ones on and this is a simple case, it slots in, and it's always safe. So if somebody wants to join your network, you can just slide that out and give it them. And away you go. Now, obviously, the ports, this is where all the magic happens. So obviously, you've got your WPS button. Um, and WPS basically enables you to, on certain devices, so I know Windows laptops, some of them do it. Instead of you having, so if your friend comes around and he's got a laptop which is WPS enabled, you basically hold that button for I think it's about five seconds normally, and basically he would press his button as well. And because you're very, very close to it and you've initiated that button, they will link automatically. Um, you don't need to put the long password or anything like that. So it is very useful. Uh, there's your RJ11 cable. So that goes directly into your telephone socket and away you go. Now everyone's telephone socket is slightly different. Some need filters, some don't, some look slightly different, but the general gist is it goes into a telephone socket and then over the open reach network and then to your nearest cabinet and then that gets beamed over to your, your closest exchange and then off it goes. Obviously then you've got your four gigabit ethernet ports. Uh, you have a WAN port as well. Um, the, only ex the only reason why you would use that is if you, this was a fiber to the premises um, set up and you had an open reach fiber terminal um, optical network terminal as I call it and that goes into the WAN port but for most people this is what's called VDSL built in which is the fiber to the cabinet kind of infrastructure built in and you've got ADSL as well which is the old older version of it which isn't fiber um, that's just your basic broadband speed so normally you'll get 20 down 20 megabits download and then one meg upload it's very very bad upload um, but yeah most people now get in their fiber to the cabinet to be honest it's quite it's a lot cheaper than it used to be. Um, and then like I said, you've got your reset holes. So if you're having major problems, you put a pin in there and it'll reset it back to defaults. And then you power in. Uh, your power in is just one of those little bricks and obviously plug straight in. And obviously you've got your physical power button. Um, routers, normally you just leave on all the time. They are quite low energy devices. Obviously the more things, what's going on there, it will use more power. But generally the best way is just to leave them on. 
Um, especially if you just joined, because they normally test your line for the first 10 days, like basically seeing how much your line can take speed-wise. Um, obviously a lot of ventilation, uh, you can see through a little bit like the circuitry and what have you, but for the most part, that is pretty much the router. Now the only indication lights you have got is on the front, which is a little white light, and that basically lets you know everything's good. Um, when you start it up, it'll blink orange, and the con blinking orange means it's connecting. Now my go live day uh, went very well. Um, basically, first it connected, it went white, and then I was only on ADSL speeds, so it was uh, just standard broadband speeds. And then about 15 minutes into that, the router reset again, and then it went to VDSL, and that's when I got my fiber speed. So as I say, guys, if you've just joined, you have to be quite patient, especially A on launch day, because it all, there's so many factors. It might need somebody needs to go down to your local cabinet and switch you over from the other provider, or there's so many things. But basically, it can go live up until 12 o'clock at night because it needs. It might need remotely doing it. Talk talks end, and then for the first 10 days, that's when you know they're basically pushing your line to its limit. So if you've paid for 80 megabits download speed, they will keep pushing your line to basically until it becomes unstable. So if it hits 80 megabits per second download, no problem. Then that's it. The testing is done. But if you're at 60 and they're going to keep pushing that line to see if they can achieve that 80 meg without obviously damaging the reliability. So 10 days is what you have to allow normally, and they do let you know that, just to basically make sure it's nice and stable. But touch wood, because I'm very close to the cabinet, I have no problems. But obviously, guys, the further away you are from a cab, the less likely you are going to achieve those speeds, and normally they'll tell you that whenever you're joining an ISP. You're kind of, you have to put your landline number in or your, your postcode, and it'll test your line and it'll know kind of at the ballpark figure what you should expect. But guys, so far so good. This, this router is actually been very good. Um, I used to have Sky routers and there was always pants, but this one's actually been really good. Um, and yeah, thank you very much for watching. Any questions, guys, about Talk Talk, please let me know. Um, it comes in the box I will show you in just a second. Obviously, it is already out. I've been using it since I joined on the 1st of November. And so far, so good. No outages, no problems whatsoever, and nice and reliable speeds. So this is the box you get with your setup. Um, as I say, I wasn't in, so I had to collect mine from the post office, but um, obviously it shows you what it is on the front. Um, there's not a lot, nothing really on the back, and there's no serial numbers or anything apart from that. It is made by Sagecom, so pretty good. And obviously, my route is not in here because it's already set up. Now, this is the important bit, guys. So this is really straightforward if you follow it. So if it's an old house and you haven't really had much, you know, input from open reach, you've probably got a socket like this, the old um, old sockets. And basically with these, because there's only one port on there, the old telephone port, you need a, a filter, which you do get provided. And uh, filters look like this. So basically one end goes in where your telephone line would, or your, t your telephone goes in. And then it can be, it basically gives you both. You've got then your router connection on your left and then your phone on the right. Um, and that basically allows you to distinguish different frequencies so you can use both at the same time. And then if it's a newer home or you've had open reach come along and fit broadband in your house before, they will have replaced it with one of these. Uh, they are pre-filtered sockets. You do not need these. And basically they have, again, there's different configurations. Um, NTE 5 was the last kind of big generation. These are them. Basically, the DSL port's at the top, and your, your phone in is on the bottom. Like I said, no filters. Router in the top. Telephone, if you've got an, a landline phone in the bottom there. And away you go. But like I said, they all look slightly different. As I say, I've got the latest one where it's all on kind of one level now. Um, but you, you are quite easy to distinguish which one's which. If it's got two ports, it's already filtered normally. Um, but obviously follow those instructions and if you're not getting anywhere, give your ISP a ring and they'll guide you through it. But Because I haven't got a telephone, a landline phone, a lot of it I don't need. Um, and then like I said, it just gives you more instructions, like you're ready to switch on. And the rest of it is very straightforward, as in plug it in, turn it on and wait for it. Obviously it lets you know what the lights do. Um, but like I said, orange means it's basically starting up. And then once it's fast orange, it'll start flashing which means it's talking to the exchange, trying to get you online. And then if you're on your go live date, you're good to go. 
Ethernet cable included, like most ISPs, they're gigabit, and actually they're all right, they do the job. And obviously your router sits here, along with your power adapters there. Um, yeah, that's it guys, pretty much. So you got, it gives you a box content anyway, so if you haven't got what you meant to have, then get in touch with your ISP. But, not gonna lie guys, so far so good. Apart from the stand, good experience with Talk Talk. Um, I did get a phone call yesterday, Basically, just asking if everything went okay and whether I wanted anything else, like Talk Talk TV or anything like that. And obviously, I said no, because um, I get Sky on the 1st of December, which I will be bringing you guys uh, coverage of that. Um, but yeah, Talk Talk, so far, so good. Any questions, guys, let me know, and I'll be more than happy to get back to you about it. Okay, so we are going to run speedtest.net. Uh, this is very widely used in the industry for testing speeds. It's important to kind of point out that this is doesn't give you a massively 100% true reflection on your connection because as you can see here this is talking from my network here to this company who holds a server for speed test so there is limitations if their servers are very busy for example their bandwidth there's lots of factors but generally it gives you a very good idea so we can change the server you can change it to whatever you want. Um, it normally does it by the one closest to you. Uh, so we are going to leave it as the default. And we're going to press go. Now, I am plugged in by Ethernet. You can tell this because my Wi-Fi is off. And uh, yeah, let's go for it. Now, I pay for 80 megabytes download and 20 megabits upload. And as we can see, uh, I get very, very, very close to the maximum I can get which I'm very um, happy with, and the ping is very good. Now, like I said, this is connected directly to a switch, Netgear Gigabit switch, then straight into the router, which I will show you on the camera. But you can see, directly wired in, we are getting, you know, 90% to where we need to be. You know, I'm six, five points a meg off my 80 meg connection download, and you can see my upload, giving a little bit more time, will creep up just over 20. We'll just do one more test. And uh, yeah, it's, it's very, very respectable. So we can see on the second run again, <coughs> it gets very, very close to uh, 75. So it'll keep kind of, the longer you left it, it probably would eventually creep up to 80, but 75 is still a cracking speed um, in my area and for everything I need to do. And the upload again for, for direct upload to YouTube is, is really helpful. Uh, I've got nothing else running on the network which requires any bandwidth, so this is kind of, as um, on point as it is going to get and yeah so that is the results of the speed test guys now I'm going to show you the infrastructure there um, and then what I'm going to do now well I am just going to turn the Wi-Fi on now once that's connected I will pull out my Ethernet so I'll just pull that out now this I am approximately about one meter from the router so it should be very good um, but we're going to have a look now the speed will probably change quite a bit because wireless is you know it's not as good as direct the ping is very much on point and we can see on the wireless we're pulling um oh it's dropping a little bit now it's dropping quite considerably now it's quite weird and obviously wireless is prone to a lot of things like interference and there's a lot more variables to it So there we go, we're flickering again, 18. No, oh, the upload's very good, very good. So very much on point to where it was. There we go, we're just gonna run one more test just to see if that download was a bit of an anomaly. So ping 12, very good. So it starts off very well, but doesn't seem to be able to sustain it very well. This is where it dipped last time, it actually seems to be doing a lot better this time. So I think the last one was a bit of an anomaly. So 70 meg is still cracking on a wireless signal. And I said we are a meter from it, so I would expect good things. The the actual router itself is actually not too bad. Um, ISP routers tend to be quite bad. And what I will do as well as part of this testing process is put in my ubiquity router to see if we get any you know different results from there. So that's not bad for wireless. So I so say we're quite close to it. Uh, what we're going to do now is actually transport it now into the where I do my office work. Now that is approximately probably about 10 meters away. Now we've got to go through one, two walls, um, and also they're quite thick walls. 
Uh, so this is quite a good test. Um, signal wise, it's still saying full strength. So we're going to go for that. So, so we are 10 meters away through good walls as well. Um, and as you can see, cracking, you know, cracking bit of uh, speed though. Very impressed still that the, the wireless router is producing this. Uh, because I'm in quite an old house, so the walls are very thick here, but it's having no problems at all maintaining very good speed. Um, and as we can see, the, the upload is again very much on point, a bit of a bit of a fluctuation, a bit more or less st steady, but still very, very, very good. So yeah, the, the router itself is great. Um, so yeah. Okay guys, so what we're going to do now is just quickly look at the interface. So the interface of the router, a lot of people won't bother even looking at this, you'll never need to normally, but... Um, if you want to change your Wi-Fi password or manage anything like this, this is how you're going to do it. Now, normally, a router's address is 192.168.0.1. That was always Skies, but TalkTalk Talk is slightly different. It's uh, 1.1. Now, that information you will find on the back of the router, but as I've changed mine before, um, I don't need to do it because I've already got it saved in there. So we're going to just log in here. Uh, and this is what it's going to look like, and this gives you quite a lot of information. Now, um, obviously, you can see it's split into three different sections here. This one here is the main one. So if you're having any issues connected online, this is where you're going to find it. Now, the current speed, that is how fast the router is talking to your local green cabinet and to the exchange. That is not necessarily what you're going to get out of the box, because... It then goes through the router, it then goes through the Wi-Fi, there's lots of different, and then you're prone to interference. So this figure here is basically how quick it's talking to the, uh, the exchange. So that's good, that's what I pay for, that's the max it's going to get. And as I explained slightly earlier in the video, is kind of what I expect, as it's uh, so close to the cabinet. So we can then look into there, we can see the wireless network name. Now I can change that, which I am going to. And then we can see here, uh, connected devices now we can uh, we'll start on the left and we'll go to internet settings and can, we can see globe router and then Wi-Fi into my home and like I said here and then you can go into uh, advanced settings but a lot of this you won't need to do um, it kind of just then um, this takes you back into the the main screen here uh, and this is where they all kind of link to if you press advanced settings so here uh, we can configure the uh, the the Ethernet ports on there. Now you'll see there's only one Ethernet port actually active, the rest are inactive. And that's because it's going through a switch, hence why there's quite a lot of packets going back and forth and what have you. Um, so yeah, link speed is auto. It will auto negotiate. As soon as you plug anything into an Ethernet port, it kind of gauges how fast it's talking to the other end. So that's fine. Let's go back. We can then see the wireless, now it's split into two, the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum and the 5 gigahertz spectrum. Um, this is the one for the better range, so this one penetrates walls better. And then this one is if you're nice and close. So you can see at the moment, this MacBook Pro that I'm recording on is on the 5 gigahertz band, as I would expect. And then you can click into it, um, you can see, you can change it if you want. So mine's actually a laptop. So I don't know if laptop's on there. It's not. There we go. I know it is notebook as I call it. There we go. So we can change it. We can see the signal strength. And we can see the signal rate. And yeah, we can apply that. And boom, you can do port forwarding. Now this is useful if you've got something like a... Uh, so one thing I am going to have to do at some point is this. Uh, so when I bring my, net, uh, my Synology NAS back into the building... Um, I will have to do a bit of port forwarding so I can access it remotely. And this is exactly how you do it. You basically open up a port and tell it what IP address to go to. And yeah, you can do game, games and applications. This is mainly for PC users, to be honest. So we've got the list is endless. So we can we can see PlayStation 4. Um, you don't really need to do it, to be honest. One works fine. And DMZ. And um, we're going to go back. I'm going to just have another look at that again. Yeah. So that's Ethernet. And like I said, we can go into the, the Wi-Fi now and change that. So you can put basic. So here we can uh, change it. So I am going to change it to Danny's network. If I could spell. 
uh, visible, so you can have it on there, so it's private, so the SSD, uh, SSID won't broadcast. Auto selection, and obviously password is password. I've already changed that once. So in theory, this uh, network should kick me off now, but I have a feeling, so you can see here, it's going to, this one should disappear. So if I refresh, it might not actually, uh, it should do actually, because I have got that network saved anyway, but there we go. WPS, we can enable this or disable this, that's up to you. It's useful if you've got a friend who's got it. So yeah, you can have it on any setting you want. But a lot of this you do just leave as it was. Mac filtering, this is another good uh, security layer. So this basically allows, basically, if you've got people you don't want on your network, if you enable this, it's kind of like an address book. If your Mac address is not on here, you're not getting on the router. Um, so you have to kind of pre-add it in, and then it will allow you to connect to the router. Um, Mac address, everything has a connection. So whether that be an Ethernet port or wireless has a Mac address. It's a unique address for that connection. Um, it doesn't change, it's static. So that way, if I wanted to add you in, I would have to have your MAC address first. I would add it into my address book if you like. Um, you can see a loud deny, or I can block you completely so you get no chance of getting on. So it's good, good if you know what you're doing with that. Cool. So you can see what's happened here. These, these two aren't actually in sync. So what we'll have to do here is also change this one to uh, Danny's Network 2. Now, this doesn't actually have two separate wireless channel. It doesn't have two separate wireless um, kind of connections. It is one router. The laptop or the device you're connecting to, here we go. So this is where it's going to kick me off now. Uh, will determine itself. So it's searching for a wireless network. And then we'll have to connect to this one now. And then we should be able to refresh in a sec. Just take normally a little bit just for this to kind of catch on. There we go. We are now back online. Cool. And again, you can change that. Now, normally, I know on the, the Sky Router, these settings used to be in sync. Um, but on these ones, it would appear they are completely separate. Um, we can now see on here, for some reason, he's still broadcasting the name there. I'm not sure why. Whether it's just not updated. Maybe it might need a reset for it to potentially do it. It's because you can see they're both changed there. So you can see my Apple Watch is on it, the iPhone uh, Max is on it, and the TV's on it. Um, yeah, bit of an odd one. And obviously the Ethernet, that'll be the network switch itself. Ah, there we go. So that it's now disappeared. So once it's, it takes a couple of minutes for it to disappear, but there we go. Cool. So internet connectivity, let's have a look in here. You can change various things if you want to, but a lot of this, if I wanted to, you just leave alone because your router gets all these details when you connect it online. Um, let's have a look here. So you can check all the firmwares up to date. You can check everything you need to do. Obviously, it's an AC router. Gives you loads of different details. You can see um, here as well, this is how you're going to determine whether your connection is um, on fiber. So it says VDSL and not ADSL. VDSL is for fiber connections. Cool. You can change to turn the lights off if you want. You can change DHCP. You know, it's endless what you can change. Uh, one of these I have changed, which is the DNS. I have changed that to 1.1.1.1, which is the Cloudflare one, which seems to be a little bit quicker. You can change the route, but now, like I said, these, if you don't know what you're doing, just, just leave alone, pretty much. Software updates, now they are, they are normally up to date themselves um, but you can also do a manual one as well um, and that's pretty much it guys There's not more to it so you, you do have quite a bit of change access control um, this kind of goes back to your firewall and stuff like that so we can have a look at the firewall firewall should be on there we go so it's on, me it's on medium at the moment we can change it to high or low and then we can add a user in, so you can add a different person in, apart from the admin. And uh, yeah, pretty much guys, that's been a look at the TalkTalk Talk router. Pretty good, can't have any complaints. And uh, thank you very much for watching.